Now, the possible side effects from these two vaccines are really the same as that are possible with any vaccine, both those um, that are in other clinical trials, but, you know, FDA approved uh, vaccines that we see all the time. I would say some of the symptoms might be a little bit more frequent with these vaccines than say with the flu vaccine, which I think um, is the one that most adults are the most familiar with. Um, in the vast majority of, of the, the symptoms, they would be described as mild, meaning they wouldn't interfere with what people wanted to do in, in their normal day. Um, most common, I think, with both of the vaccines is just soreness and tenderness at the site, again, described as mild and goes away in a day or two. And then some of the other symptoms like um, low grade fever, feeling achy, feeling tired, maybe headaches. Um, again, those are not worrisome. They're not unexpected. And to some degree, um, I would say the same thing here that I say to my patients when I'm trying to encourage them to get the flu vaccine is that these symptoms really are your immune system telling you that the vaccine is doing exactly what we want it to do. So for example, when we get sick with an actual vir viral or bacterial infection, the symptoms we have, including the fever and all the things that go with that, are not from the bacteria or the virus itself. It's from our immune system responding to those, um, we'll call them sort of invaders. So with the vaccines, we're trying to trick your immune system into thinking it's, see it's seen that said virus, in this case, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And so it amounts to immune, immune response. Um, and so those symptoms could be, in fact, your immune system responding in a way we wanted to. Um, but, you know, as I said, generally speaking, mild, not severe, um, typically going away in sometimes less than a day, um, but a day or two is sort of um, the most that we see. So again, not worrisome, not unexpected. Um, and I think most of us would agree that the dealing with those sort of minor symptoms for a day or two um, given how effective these vaccines seem to be at in particular preventing severe illness, um, pre preventing death, and also preventing what we would call sort of symptomatic disease. I've seen a lot of patients who've um, had COVID now and you know the symptoms that they have are not mild for one to two days. Usually they're quite you know de debilitating in the sense people can't go about what they wanna do um, and last for a lot longer. Yeah, they certainly can be. And I think that goes along with my point about um, these symptoms being evidence that the vaccines are doing what we, we want them to do. The reason to get a second dose is that in the earlier studies, they found that the second dose did improve the immune response. So it's like sort of another um, sort of tricking your immune system, right? So it sort of mounts uh, more of immune response with the second dose. So it would make sense um, if you think about it that way, that you might have more symptoms after the second dose. But again, even though they're more common, I guess, after the second dose, um, and maybe a little bit more severe in the sense that um, um, lasts a little bit longer. But again, the vast majority of, of um, the cases they're described as mild and go away in a day or two. If you're having a symptom that you would norm, or you might consider taking um, Tylenol or ibuprofen, for example, I, it would be okay. I think the preference would be to take Tylenol instead of ibuprofen, just so you're not adding an anti-inflammatory effect when you're trying to mount an immune response. Um, but again, I think it's um, really helpful for people to know upfront that they might have some of these mild symptoms. I think that for all of us, that tends to make us a little less worried about them, understand what they're about. Um, for the soreness and the tenderness in the arm, really, you know, again, that's with a lot of vaccines that we give um, and moving it and going about your normal day, in fact, usually helps it resolve quicker. So I would say, I don't think people need to feel any increased um, reason to take something unless they normally would, or it's really, you know, sort of bothering them to a degree they feel like they really should. For me, because I know what they are, um, that they're ex to some degree um, not unexpected, right? Not everybody's going to have them. Um, I would just wait until I have them and then, you know, maybe have something on hand. Um, but I don't really feel there's a need because we expect these, because we know they're not um, worrisome, because we know they're not a concern, um, that I don't really feel that that's um, necessary. I think it's all about sort of weighing risk benefit. I think. Um, the risk of actually getting COVID um, and how potentially sick it could make you. Um, I would say the risk of, of requiring COVID and having to be out for work for 
certainly more days um, than you know 24 hours is a, is a much greater risk and not and in including you know the risk of transmitting to others. So you know this the vaccines do several things, right? If they prevent you from getting sick, they prevent you from ha from missing work, they prevent you from potentially. Um, you know, we're not exactly sure whether they prevent transmission to other folks, but I think there's some reason to expect that um, and prevent you from getting, you know, really sick and having to go to the hospital. So it's, you know, 24 hours of a mild symptom versus, you know, the risk of something else. Um, and again, I would say in the vast majority of times, aside from the soreness of the arm, taking Tylenol um, would resolve those symptoms um, quite nicely.